Scott Dinsmore here with us today, um, and I'm very excited to hear about your latest change to your website, Scott. You've made a lot of progress in the last several years. I've been learning a lot from you, actually, um, about how to blog and, and, and how to give back to the community. So we want to hear um, about your website and also your wealth management company, uh, Cumbre Capital. So let's start with, if you could tell uh, my readers a little bit, Live Your Legend, and you know why, do, why should we care? What is your value prop behind that site? Yeah, sure. Well, it's a pleasure to be here. First of all, thanks, thanks, John. And if I am able to teach you anything at all, that's a heck of a victory, as far as I'm concerned. That's <laughs> yeah, not easy. You me. Uh, <laughs> well, it's been fun trading ideas. So yeah, live your legend. I you know rebranded. What now? It's been almost a month, and it's been an awesome experience. I uh, it you know the site started out as as just a, a blog for kind of book reviews and personal development and things, and as I got more focused on how I could help people and the stuff I really cared about was really about people finding what they what they really cared about doing, the, the work that mattered to them based on their strengths and their values and things that really lit them on fire and got them excited to wake up. And that's what I call to live your legend. And it comes from Paulo Coelho's book, The Alchemist, where he talks about one's personal legend, how they pursue their destiny and kind of it's this path that they never actually reach the destination, but it's all about the journey and the experience and the exploration. And so, you know, anyone and everyone has the right and ability to live their legend. It's just a, really comes down to understanding yourself and kind of what you're good at, how you can best put your dent in the world, as I like to say it. So that's what we're doing at the site. Really what I, I've put together is a bunch of experiments and just practical tools and tips and you know, interviews with people to better understand how you can make that unique mark and let people realize that it's our duty for each of us to, to make that mark. And the world is a much better place if, if we all do that. The, the tagline I have is change the world by doing work you love. And I, I believe that if, if people start doing work that they really care about, that really gets them excited, it's going to ripple. And, you know, they're going to treat people better. Those people are going to treat other people better. And you're going to have this incredible, almost a revolution, I, li I like to think. So it, it's exciting to, to right. think about. It. And I, I guess in the process, I'm interviewing a thousand living legends from around the world that have you know, everyone from, you know, guys like yourself who have, you know, built and sold companies all the way to maybe someone who just uses their skills to teach algebra to some kids down the street, but it's them using their passions. You know, that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. That's great. Well, I, I, it, the site resonates with me because that's largely what I view my role as a teacher at UCSB is, yeah, sure, I'm trying to teach them a little bit about entrepreneurship and we're trying to have fun with it. But at the same time, I feel like if I can get a student to focus on what their adventure is going to be or what you know what what is their legend like how if they can start defining what being a legend is in their world yeah. you know I've done my job so I I, 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 um, I really um, do appreciate your site now you did start out back in 06 with um, reading for success another very um, very popular and successful um, blog talk to me a little bit about what you learned and then why did you decide to make that shift get just walk me a little bit through that thought process yeah, it was definitely, I mean, more than anything, probably an emotional change. You, you build something for the past, you know, four years and have a following because of it. And it's really tough to think about leaving your baby behind. But I, as I got more into the space of just the online work and blogging and met a lot of these guys who've done very well in the space and be able to help a lot of people, it turns out, just like anything else, you know, if you try and be too general and help too many people, you don't end up really helping anyone. And so right. I really wanted to get specific. And, you know, as I built the Reading for Your Success blog, you know, it had just about zero success the first three years. No one followed it, no one paid attention, and then I decided I was either going to shut it down or really go to work on how to take one of these things to like a, an incredibly high level, at least the highest level that I could. And so I, and that's one big thing that I focus on, on in the work I do is mastery and really finding your right models for success. And I found some great guys in the space, whether it's Leo about of Zen Habits or Corbett Bar of Think Traffic, these different sites who these guys have done incredibly well relatively quickly. And I found a path that made sense in terms of how to build a good following and a really powerful following. But also a part of the process was, and I heard this from a lot of the guys I respect, you know, you really need to have something you can focus on. And, right. and more and more, I found myself sitting at lunches with people whenever they're ready to take the leap because they're at a job they absolutely can't stand and they want to do something different. And, my success rate was like 80% in terms of people who would quit after they talked to me. <laughs> so I just realized, <laughs> I realized I would warn them before we'd have, have lunch. And uh, I just saw this as something I just really, really cared about. And so that's where, in order to really take it to the next level, to have a real business around it, and as I'm building 
now products and courses related to this topic of doing work that you really love, uh, I realized it just it needed a, a facelift. And so the nature of my writing hasn't really changed much. I mean, my passion's been there the past you know year or longer, but now it's just a more congruent with my beliefs about how you can best, how I can best impact what people are doing and, and impact the world. So, and that's that congruency is something that I work a lot with with clients on and things because if you're not in line with your values and and strengths and what you believe is important, then you're not going to rally troops. You're not going to rally yourself to get excited. So that yep. that's what caused the transition. And you know, long story short, it took you know 500. Probably there were probably 500 more tasks than I thought would be involved in the whole rebrand and relaunch. And thankfully, it it ended up being a really great experience where you know I didn't. Don't think I really lost many readers and, and got some really neat new ones. So. Yeah. Well, no, you got a huge lift when you first launched. I think your <laughs> rollout of the site was incredible. And I remember, um, you know, I think we had breakfast or uh, brunch right around that time. You were thinking about flooring it, quite frankly, with your with your other site. And so many people mm-hmm. talk about that sort of thing. Like you know, you just sit there and hear people say, "I'm gonna go for it, man." And you know how many people really do, and 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 then even a fewer number of those people really um, make an impact. And you and you know you did like you you went for it, and your site just took off, and it was it was really gratifying for me to vicariously sort of watch that happen. And, and uh, I know it, it meant a lot to you, and I also know how hard that that is to do. I mean, it's not something that you just wake up and and make happen overnight. So. Um, hats off to you, and I'm really happy that your transition not only was it successful. It's like you, it's like you've taken it to not just another level, but a couple levels even higher than what you had for reading for success. So, uh, congratulations. Let, let's talk uh, a little bit about the self help. Yeah, no, no, and you, you've um, you've motivated me, inspired <laughs> me. So I appreciate that. Uh, talk for a second about All right. <laughs> the self help um, industry. Um, you know, I'm a bit of a cynic, as I say in a lot of my videos. Um, in the in that and the self help world tends to be populated by two extremes. You know, you've got people like you that your heart's in the right place, and I've known you for years. I know that you know you're out there for the right reasons. And, you know, and then you do have charlatans that are out there to make a quick buck, and they launch. You know, they'll latch onto whatever the latest you know buzzword is, and then they're gone. Right. Do, do you do anything explicitly to differentiate yourself there to kind of not look like the Elmer Gantry type of you know a quick buck artist? Yeah, it's a good question. I've definitely come across. Kind of my search to see what to model and how to go about it. There's all over the map that you can do. And the thing is, a lot of those tactics tend to, tend to be successful from a financial perspective. You know, it, it works to, to do these different marketing techniques. But I think for me, this has always been, it first started off as a project that I had really no interest in having it be a business or just my way of helping and, and, and writing and just kind of giving my message to the world. So that was nice that my intentions weren't I need to you know make a buck from this as fast as I can and then as I've learned about it and how and it's also taken a ton more of my time as I want it to then you realize okay it makes sense to, to add in some revenue type of uh, generating tools and things there and one way that I differentiate is I don't I do very little promoting of different people's things for money you can do affiliates and things like that and I've made it I make it very clear on the site and also just in the things that I that I write that if I do mention something or promote it, it's something that has significantly moved the needle in my life and my business that I think would be incredible value for the readers and is in line with what I, you know, the brand and what I talk about on the side. I try to keep everything very on brand and on purpose and I make it clear that if something, I mention something and it's, I'm going to benefit from it, you know, they can know about it. That's fine. You know, 95%, 90, 95% of what I offer on the site is totally free and right. most people will always just just do it for free and that's fine but then some want something further they want to work one on one or they want to go on a very deep dive on something and that's where i have some of the more specific products and things but uh, i think that's the difference people once you start to realize you can tell someone to buy something and they might buy it it's easy to kind of get on the other side of the of the line right. so it's just not you know the reputation and kind of what i'm building with live your legend is is more important than that i think when you do things you care about and help people the, the money generally will find its way or you're in your direction. I'm a firm believer of that. And and I think you're also taking a lifelong approach. Like you're taking a long term approach, not, hey, where am I going to be at the end of this year? What's my bank account going to look like? Right. But I have to admit I'm actually promoting something um, subliminally. Um the the trophy behind me is a surfing trophy my son won this week. <laughs> and I, oh wow. And I wanted to get right. props. He doesn't know it's back there. <laughs> no way. It's very I'm cool. sure he learned it all from you, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just like his golf game. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, anyway, um 
So, so you know, I can hear somebody, you know, the cogs rolling in somebody's head as they watch this. They're like, John, big deal. This guy's a full-time blogger. If I was a full-time blogger, I'd be killing it too. But you're doing so much more. I mean, we, we touched upon it briefly, but you've got a whole other business that you're running. Cumbre Capital is an extremely successful wealth management business that would take most people's, you know, 120% of their time. Um, your again, your approach is something I really like. You unlike you know ninety eight percent of the wealth managers out there, you're not just charging a flat fee and hoping for the best. You're actually winning when your clients win. Excuse me. Talk about that Warren Buffett approach a little bit, and and maybe just expound about that for some of the folks that might not be familiar with it. Yeah. So as it turns out, Cumbria Capital is more than seventy percent project for me, you know, and so that's what makes it tough to have the two to balance because they're all so fun but right. 70 yeah, 70 this is really, more than 100 <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good point um, so yeah the with with Cumbria Capital really well my partner and I are total Buffett fanatics and we go out to Omaha every year and what we just firmly believe about the space is that we need to get back to the basics of what Warren Buffett intended an investment partnership should be when he was 30 years old helping families in Omaha you know, finding undervalued, unloved, unheard of companies. And, and we had lawyers go out and recreate exactly what he built. So t really to the letter, all the rules of his partnership, something that hasn't really existed since then, you know, since the 1950s and 60s. And probably the most important aspect of it and the biggest difference is that we only charge people if we make them money. And it sounds so simple. I tell people that and they say, well, yeah, of course. And I say, well, did you know that, you know, 99% of other right. funds don't do it that way? Right. And then, of course, alongside, we have all of our money invested, and they say, well, of course. And I, I well, do you know that only 13% you know, of, of managers have their money in their own fund? And yep. these stats blow my mind, and I just, didn't, just don't believe it's, it's fair or congruent for a manager to be running what we call a true partnership. We want it to be a partnership like Buffett intended, where everyone wins when everyone wins, and that's the only way. So not to mention it really messes with the incentives, which, you know, Charlie Munger and Buffett always talk about that. Right. If you're incentivized on a, you know, an a, annual fee, you're going to be incentivized to raise a bunch of money and do kind of average. And for us, you know, we, we kill what we eat, and and it's and it's just we don't see any other proper way of, of doing it. And we've you know built a neat community of people who really see the investment world that way. Mm -hmm. And and so far, it's been a you know fantastic experience. Yep. Well, I, I think our the venture fund I'm involved with is very similar. We're not getting rich on the fees. Um, we're, you know, we're yeah. s most venture capitalists are incentivized to raise big funds because they can pull down big fees. Mm -hmm. We're incentivized to do well with the money we have and, and make money along with our investors when we have exits. So again, uh, I'm very much in line right. with what you're thinking. Now, I know for a while your fund was closed. You sort of close it to get, you know, to get things squared away and then you open it again. Mm -hmm. Is it open now? And if so, what, what's the, the characteristics that you're looking for in a potential investor? Yeah, so it is. It is open on a quarterly basis. Will we have started taking new investors in the last, you know, few quarters? And and really, it, the most people who are in our fund, we have a really cool group of really founders, entrepreneurs, CEOs, and executives, or partners in law firms and things. Really, people who understand business ownership because that's how we look at the stock market: is owning really parts of a business. And so they understand the value of cash flow and that if a ticker symbol, you know, drops by forty percent. It doesn't mean that their ability to earn cash and have quality customers has gone down by 40 percent. And yep. so that's what's really resonated. And so that's the biggest criteria for us is people who can align with that vision. And they usually are owners and founders. And there's been some great guys probably between we have some in our, their mid-20s up to, I guess, all the way up to, you know, 65 or 70. But the bulk is 35, 40 years old who have probably built and sold something and just understand that. But are way too busy to spend their time digging through the weeds like like we like to do. So well, I didn't realize I'm probably too young for the fun then. <laughs> That's right. I'll have to wait a couple of years. So if somebody wants to learn a little bit more about what you're up to, what's the best way that, for them to do that? Yeah, I think the best way is we have a, I mean, you could, it depends on what you're looking at. For the fund, you can go online at cumbracapital.com and there's a spot you can fill in the information to get notified. Unfortunately, the site is protected, password protected. For SEC regulations and all that, but mm -hmm. happy to chat with you know whoever's interested. And Live Your Legends totally open to anyone who wants to take check it out. Um, and I think the rules for the fund uh, are the standard you know um, qualified client and accredited investor, and then we have a hundred thousand dollar minimum. And it's a year lockup, but we really try to think of it when we talk with people. If they're not in it for five years, from a psychological perspective, it's probably not a good fit. You know, right. we're right. this is a thirty year project for us, and we're in 
we're in no hurry. So Right. Well, I can't wait 30 years from now for someone to watch this video on the Internet. And go, <laughs> oh, my God, that's Scott. Look at him. Look how young he is. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. I'm that other guy? <laughs> <laughs> well, Scott, well, I really appreciate it. I think we, we covered a lot of ground here with um, Live Your Legend um, as well as Cumbre Capital. Um, again, I thank you for your time. I appreciate it, and I look forward to your future success online. Oh, well, we have some fun together. We're, our paths are going to cross plenty. No Thanks, way. John. No doubt, man. Take care. <laughs> Bye-bye. All right. Cheers.